Hello, Dave Hurwitz at ClassicsToday.com here to talk to you about Carl Nielsen's Fourth Symphony, The Inextinguishable. Now, I remember when I first heard it, that it was called The Inextinguishable and I was talking about it to a friend of mine and they said, well, you obviously have the wrong extinguisher. Well, actually, we all know that the idea behind the symphony is not putting out a fire, but rather the idea that music, like life, is inextinguishable. And the great, I mean, for me anyway, and I'm sure for you too, the great thing about this symphony is the fabulous finale, which features an all-out battle to the death between two sets of timpani positioned on opposite sides of the stage. And it's a bear of a timpani part. Let me tell you, it takes an awful lot of work to master. It includes some pedal, glis a pedal glissando at the end of the, the last battle, too. It's, it's quite a bit of work and totally thrilling. I mean, it hits you in the solar plexus. It's, it's just a, a visceral, physical, exhilarating piece of music. And it's played all in one movement all the way through. It has four real movements, but they're all linked together. And the number of performances that have made a mess of it from people who you kind of would think would do better is, is pretty surprising. Among the failures, I just want to tell you what they are quickly. Three of them come to mind immediately, and there are more than that, but three of them really sort of shocked me. One was Leonard Bernstein, who was otherwise a wonderful Nielsen conductor. I mean, his re recordings of the third and the fifth are both, you know, sort of reference versions in those works. But in the fourth, something went wrong. He just became kind of willful. And I mean, it's like all these things. It's a question of degrees and a bit of taste here and there. But for me, they don't go anywhere. Um, it doesn't go anywhere. And next was Esapekka Salonen. This was one of his early, early recordings and it, it, sonically it's lousy and the the timpani aren't well caught and and again the the tempo relationships in the finale are are problematic and lastly Papo Berglund who I thought would be just ideal for this symphony because you know he's sort of a a literalist in terms of score reading and and I, I figured he would be very sort of organic and exciting because that's the way he does Sibelius no, it doesn't work at all. It's, it's a very soggy, uninteresting performance. So those are three to avoid. The problem, as I've just suggested, occurs in the finale. And it's this, you know, the symphony has a motto theme, a big motto theme that occurs, you know, the climaxes of the first movement, and then it's going to return at the end of the finale. Sibelius, I mean, Sibelius, ugh, kill me now, the lightning is about to strike, no. Nielsen asks in the score that the tempo be kept steady basically until the end. In other words, although this grand theme returns and it is a big apotheosis, he does not want you to slam the brakes on and create this sort of huge, um, you know, Wagnerian kind of climax. The point of the music, at least in my view, is its energy. It's forward momentum, and you can't kill the momentum. Unfortunately, a lot of conductors really like to make uh, what we call a geschichte, a megillah, you know, in Yiddish, you know, a big deal out of the last return of this theme. And so they slow down dramatically. And while it, it's very effective from a, a, a noise and volume point of view, I don't think it does the movement or the music justice, and it's not nearly as exciting as the symphony can be when the conductor keeps the tempo and the pulse moving right through to the final bars. And the performances that do that are few and far between. I understand a slight broadening, you know, a little bit of emphasis. I mean, that's cool, but, but you got to keep the rhythm there, folks. I mean, you know, you just have to. So with that in mind, I have here Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six performances that I think do the music justice and are worth considering. The first on Da Capo is, is this one with the, the Danish National Radio Symphony Orchestra and, and Michael Schoenvant. This is probably the best recording to come out of Denmark so far. It's sonically terrific. Um, it's an exciting performance. A little bit, perhaps, just a touch on the measured side. I don't know. But... It's really, it's really very, very good. 
And I think this cycle was reissued also on Naxos. So you can get it a couple of ways. Uh, it's a very good, sane, safe recommendation. Now, there were, of course, a lot of historical recordings, you know, of this symphony, and, you know, coming some coming from Denmark with famous Danish conductors. I've heard them all. I don't care. If it doesn't sound good, I mean, if the recording can't capture the thrill of the impact of mallets on, on, on the skin of the drum and the glow of the brass, then I don't really want to hear the rest of it. I mean, I'm just not interested in anything else the conductor does. And that's me. You may find that, you know, there are several bars in the slow movement that are make or break for you. But uh, I think this is a symphony that really lives or dies on the success of its finale because that's where all the music is headed. Next, Herbert Blomstedt with the San Francisco Symphony, a terrific Nielsen cycle. He recorded a Nielsen cycle twice. The first one was on EMI. It was a bit underplayed in my view. Um, this version of the fourth is very, very good until you get to those very last bars. Blomstedt simply, you know, there's a big diminuendo and then a big crescendo um, until the, you know, up through the final chord. And Blomstedt liked to really, really, really slow down at that point and give those final bars this autumnal glow and, and take the dynamics way, way, way below the mezzo forte that Nielsen indicates. It's a very personal view of the work. I don't like it. Um, I respect it because Blomstedt is a conductor who I think always deserves respect. It's always musical. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a conception that certainly works for what it is. It's legitimate, but I, I don't think it, it, it does the music justice. And I think Nielsen's intentions here are very, very clear. And I don't think that's the place to interject, you know, your own, your own nostalgia. But, you know, you may very well disagree. And like I said, I, it's a legitimate thing. And Blomstedt is such a fine Nielsen conductor that I can't, I can't disregard him just on that account because the rest of the symphony is, is quite beautiful and quite well done. Next, uh, the New York Philharmonic with Alan Gilbert. Now these performances were, were actually um, recorded by Doc Capo in New York live. I was at several of them um, and they were tremendously exciting in concert. And this is an extremely exciting performance. Um, in every respect. I mean, the New York Philharmonic, as you know, is a real powerhouse orchestra, and Gilbert pulled no, pulled no prisoners for these performances. They are big, bold, punchy, gutsy performances. I think some might prefer a leaner orchestral sound. I think that in some respects, uh, it may be that they're almost, almost too noisy I mean, there's, there's more subtlety in the music than I think Gilbert and these players realize, but they're, they're a thrill. There's no question about it. They're very, very exciting and, and very well recorded. And so they're definitely worth having. I think, you know, Da Capo was very excited to make these recordings in New York because, as I mentioned in talking about Leonard Bernstein in, in the Nielsen Third, um, in the Bernstein box, you know, it, it was Bernstein who really put Nielsen on the map, even for the Danes, when he went to Denmark and conducted the Third Symphony there. And his recordings of Nielsen, even that fourth, were, were very, very significant landmarks in the history of the composer, his discography, and his acceptance outside of Denmark. So it meant a lot for Da Capo to have the opportunity to record these symphonies in New York, and they did an excellent job. It's a wonderful, wonderful Nielsen cycle. Definitely worth having. Next is another wonderful Nielsen cycle. This is Sakari Oromo with the Royal Stockholm Philharmonic Orchestra. This is, for my money, the best modern Nielsen cycle. It is the most, the most excitingly conducted and certainly the best sonically. The BIS engineers just, you know, they're, they're, they're in Sweden, maybe because they're in Sweden and it was the hometown team, I don't know. But they, they pulled out all the stops and came up with a, a cycle of Nielsen symphonies that is absolutely second to none. If you're only getting one cycle of Nielsen symphonies, then, then Oromo is, is your guy. And we'll talk about some other performances in the cycle as we discuss some of the other Nielsen symphonies. But this is a great, 
great performance of the fourth with a wonderful finale that I think gets the tempo relationships just right. Now, we deal with some singleton performances that you might not expect. First, Jean Martinon, the Chicago Symphony. This was always a great Nielsen four. It was the one that introduced a lot of Americans to the work. God knows what Martinon saw in the piece that led him to do it, but he and Chicago just play the crap out of it. It's just terrific. Now, do not get this version. Here's the problem. The engineers, for some stupid reason, when they transferred this, put a pause in between the slow movement and the finale, which, I mean, it's just, it sets your teeth on edge. You're listening to this exciting performance. They're, they're, you know how the, the slow movement ends, you know, with all those rushing strings and that sort of fugato thing, and they're all getting excited. This huge crescendo is happening, and you're just about ready for the finale to start, and there's dead space. I mean, you absolutely want to take this thing and throw it out a window and drive over it with your car. I mean, that's how annoying it was. However, I am pleased to tell you that when this happened and I heard this, I screamed and shrieked and jumped up, up and down and got somebody who knew somebody at BMG and in the Martinon box in which this recording is contained, the Martinon Chicago box, they get rid of the stupid pause. They've put the symphony back together correctly. So you can hear it in its proper form, but you have to get the Martinol Chicago box. Now, is there any reason not to get the Martinol Chicago box? No, everyone should have the Martinol Chicago box. It's uniformly fabulous. So get the box and you'll get this great Nielsen 4. However, my choice in Nielsen 4, and I think this one's gonna surprise you a bit, it's, it's not the obvious one, is Alexander Gibson with the Scottish National Orchestra on a cheapy Chandos budget release. Whether it still exists, I have no idea. Everything exists somewhere I'm finding as I'm doing these videos. All of you wonderful commentators out there are finding that it's either on Spotify or YouTube or somewhere, but this is the one to get. It is one of those performances where the conductor just had the music in his bones and they play like it's, it's, it's like they're composing it as they go. It is the most organic, unified, exciting, unaffected, unfussy, brilliant performance. And it has the best recorded timpani in the bunch. I mean, my God, they speak. That battle in the finale is thrilling. And Gibson keeps the tempo going right to the end. It's a sprint. It isn't a victory lap, which is just wonderful. And you'll see, if you hear this performance, just how great it sounds when it's played the way that Nielsen asked that it be played and the tempo is maintained up until the end. I don't know, you know, what, what happened on the day. This is one of those recordings where just everything went right because Gibson also recorded the Fifth Symphony and it's pretty lousy. So, you know, it just goes to show you can't make any assumptions. You have to listen to each performance, take it as it comes, and draw your conclusions accordingly. So for my one Nielsen inextinguishable, Alexander Gibson, the Scottish National Orchestra on Chandos. It's a great, great performance. It will shock you. It will thrill you. It will give you a reason to keep on listening. Thank you all.